Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about Sachev's rule, which is sometimes known as the poor get poorer. Now, Sachev's rule is used for elimination reactions. But the elimination reactions you need to know at NCA level 2 and 3 are the elimination of alcohols and haloalkanes, both of which form alkenes. And within that, Sachev's rule is only applied if your alcohol or haloalkane is asymmetrical. Okay, so Sachev's rule, if we've got an asymmetrical haloalkane or alcohol, then we can have two possible products formed. And Sachev's rule states that during the elimination of an asymmetric alcohol, the major product is formed when the hydrogen is removed from the carbon with the least number of hydrogens. So just to quickly recap, an elimination reaction removes the alcohol or halogen group and a hydrogen from the neighbouring carbon. And it is that neighbouring hydrogen which is the one that decides which one is your major or minor product. Now this rule is sometimes described as the poor get poorer, or the poor become poorer. Let me show you some examples. Okay, so here is an asymmetric halo alkane, and this one is one of the simplest ones you'll come across. 2-chlorobutane. <coughs> and with this halo alkane, we can remove the chlorine. That's a very easy thing to do. But we have to remove a hydrogen from a neighbouring carbon. Now there are two possible neighbouring carbons. Neighbouring hydrogens, I should say. Hydrogens on neighbouring carbons. So we could remove that one there that's in red. Or this one in green. And depending on which one we remove, we can form two possible products. So let's just have a look at what those possible products are for a second. So we can have, if we remove the one at the end, the green one, we're going to get, okay, hang on, let me just try and draw this one slightly better. I'm not going to bother drawing the hydrogens on right now, but of course you would. I'm just being slightly lazy because it's a bit tedious trying to draw it onto the screen. But you can imagine all the hydrogens in there. I'm quite certain of that. So if I remove this hydrogen... So if I remove the hydrogen from carbon 1, the one that I've circled in green, then I get this product here, bute 1n. If I remove the hydrocarbon, or the hydrogen circled in red, then I get that one, 2-butene but, two or bute 2n. So how do you decide which one is removed? Well, we come back to Sachev's rule. And Sachev's rule states that the hydrogen is removed from the carbon that contains the least number of hydrogens. So this particular carbon has two hydrogens on it, while this carbon has three hydrogens on it. So the major product is formed when the hydrogen is removed from the carbon with the least number of hydrogens. Okay, so that makes this one the major product. And this one, the minor product. And this rule applies for both alcohols and haloalkanes. Okay? It can be as complicated or as simple as you like. But always the hydrogen is removed from the carbon with the least number of hydrogens. Now there are some situations where Sachev's rule will not come into play. Let me just show you a couple of those for a second. Okay, so here we have two haloalkanes, which on the surface of it are both asymmetrical and so therefore should both bring into play Sachev's rule. 
However, if we look at this molecule here on the left, you can see that the chlorine is on carbon 1. There is only one neighbouring carbon atom, this one here. So the hydrogen has to come from that neighbouring carbon, which means if we take those away, then the double bond must go here. Okay, there's only one place that that double bond can go because there was only one neighbouring carbon. If we look at the second molecule, this one's slightly more interesting because although we've got a chlorine atom on carbon too, and there are definitely two neighbouring carbon atoms, only one of those neighbouring carbon atoms actually has hydrogens on it. So carbon 3, or whichever one this one is, has two three methyl groups. We can't remove a methyl group with the reagents that we're teaching you about at this level. You can, if you know what you're doing, but not with the reagents that we're using. So there's only one neighbouring carbon atom that has hydrogens on it. So we're going to have to take away these ones. Okay, a bit like that. And we'll put the double bond there. Because, again, it's the only place it can go. So if there's only one possible place that your double bond can go, then that has to be the product for your elimination reaction. Satchev's rule is only really relevant if there are two possible products that can be formed. So that's all I have to say about Satchev's rule, other than to say that this rule is sometimes known as the poor become poorer, because the way to remember it is the hydrogen with the, the carbon with the least number of hydrogens, the poorest one, is the one that's already going to lose that extra hydrogen preferentially. And of course to note that in this case you will get both products formed. As with addition reactions in Markovnikov's rule, the rich become richer and the poor become poorer. They're just about identifying which product is formed in the larger amounts. Both products will be formed, but one will be formed in a much larger amount than the other. Okay, so thanks for that, guys. I will